Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope your week was great and that you're taking this weekend to self-care, love yourself, pamper yourself because you sure do deserve it. So today's video is going to be a men's shirt refashion. I thrifted this shirt for $3. It's in a size triple X large and the color of this is to die for. I love it so much. And the material of this was 100% cotton and it felt so beautiful against my skin. So I knew I wanted to make a romper with this and I did exactly that and this this is what that came out looking like. I love how this turned out so much. I love the cinching in at the waist to the belt and I love that the top is a bit more oversized and that the bottoms are a bit figure hugging. That way we can show off them curves, girl. So I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. And I know rompers will make you cry when you go to the bathroom because all of this has to come off, but such a small price to pay if you ask me. So in case you want to make your very own romper, let me show you how to do it. So first things first, you're going to mark with a piece of chalk the point you want your shorts and shirts to, wow, shirts and shirts to attach. So as you can see, I had my point pretty high up and that's because I wanted my shorts to be a bit more high waisted. So across that point, I just drew a straight line with my ruler and I just cut off the shirt into two bits, the bottom and the top bit. So I just used my pair of scissors for this. And once I had my two pieces, it's time to throw away the top bit. You're not going to need it. I'm kidding. Please, please do not make a bikini out of it. We will need it later. So as you can see, I'm working on the bottom bit and I'm just opening up this piece along the side seams. That way we can get a front bit and a back bit. So using my pair of scissors, I just went up the side seams and split those bad boys up. Their relationship was over. They had to break up. And now, as you can see, I have two pieces and now we're going to work on the front piece. So all I'm doing is I'm unbuttoning the two pieces that way I can take off the buttons and recycle them. Not really yet. Keep them for a future project. So I just took my seam ripper and I tore those buttons off. The family reunion was over. They had to go home. So sadly, this was that time. And as you can see, this took no time at all. Just make sure they're leaving their home and always make sure you recycle because you never know when you need an extra button. I also got rid of the tag. She had to go. She had to retire. Her work was no longer needed and we had to send her home. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting the two pieces right sides together and I'm just making sure they match up quite nicely because we do need to make the front bit of our shorts. So once everyone was happy, the marriage was off to a good start. I just took my pair of high-waisted jeans and I'm going to use this as a pattern for my shorts. So as you can see, I'm folding my pants along the front side and I'm really getting in there. I'm making sure everything is out on display. I was shoving her and pushing her in all directions. And once I was satisfied with my pattern, as you can see, I made sure everyone was sitting at the right seat at the church. I just put this on top of my two pieces and I'm just going to draw my curve. So as you can see, I really had to just make sure everything was nice and aligned. And you want to be careful with that curve bit because they are very different at the front and the back. So as you can see me do, I'm just taking a piece of chalk and tracing out that curved bit to my heart's content. Once I was satisfied with my curve, I just continued the line upwards. I tried to make it as straight as possible, but being me, it wasn't straight and that's okay. And I also decided I wanted to add a bit more seam allowance at the bottom because girl, I did not want this short suffocating me. So once I was satisfied with everything, I cut out that shape bit. And as you can see, we have our front bit. I'm making sure to mark this pieces because I don't want to get confused, especially when attaching the shorts to the shirt, you want to attach the right side to the right side. So just make sure you take this extra step. It really does go a long way in helping you. So once I was done with the front bit, I just took the back bit and I'm folding it in half and I'm making sure the right sides are kissing. They're happy. They're committed to each other. And I took the same pair of pants and this time I'm folding them out towards the back. So as you can see, you can already see the curve is so steep and this is because you have a booty crack and things have to have space. Okay, girl? So make sure you accommodate that space unless you want this riding up your 
you know. So just make sure you follow the curve to the best of your ability. So as you can see, that curve is very defined and that's exactly what you want for the back piece. And once I was satisfied with the curve, I made sure to put the front bit on top of these two pieces because I wanted things to align perfectly. So you want the top bit of your shorts to be the same size because when you attach them, you don't want one side being bigger than the other. So just make sure everything aligns up quite nicely. And once you're satisfied with everything, cut off that curved bit and you essentially have your back bit. I also made sure to split it in two. That way you have two pieces and that's that. So as you can see, that curved girl, she is thick with a triple C. So I made sure to also mark the back bits just because I don't want trouble later on. I'm trying to make sure everyone's happy and no one is fighting. So once I was satisfied with everything, I just made sure to align these two pieces and I'm just pinning them together along the curve. So this is where you're going to sew. So you need to make sure everyone's happy and aligned. And now you're just going to do a basic straight stitch along the curved bit to join the two pieces together. You're going to Repeat the same thing with the front pieces because you want everyone to be happy. You want this relationships to last. So make sure no one is starting off on the wrong foot. And once you've pinned everyone together, you're just going to sew along the curved bit as well to join both the pieces together. So moving on to my sewing machine, I just did a basic straight stitch. Make sure you follow the curves, accommodate the curves. Do not blame her for being thick. Just sew along the pattern and follow along and be happy and content. So I just did a basic straight stitch. Always make sure you backstitch when you're starting and ending your sewing. That way things don't come undone and your whole business is exposed to the world. So I also made sure to serge the raw edge. And this is because I did not want my fabric fraying on me. If you don't have a serger, just use a zigzag stitch and it will serve the same exact purpose. And once you've done this to both pieces, you will have your front bits and your back bits. Now it's time to put them right sides kissing. That way you can join them in holy matrimony and they can begin their married life have children just make sure that they're getting along okay so once i align the two pieces right sides are kissing i just pinned along the sides both sides because you want your shorts to be closed on both sides unless your thing is not having closed shorts. So as you can see, I pinned the other side off camera as well. And you're also going to pin the crotch bit because you obviously don't want this to be a skirt. So I recommend doing this step. That way you have a pair of cute shorts. So I just pinned and aligned everyone. And once everything was nice and pinned, you're just going to sew and you will have your shorts. So pinning, I just had to baby this fabric. I was like, girl, you have to settle down. It's time. You you don't need to be out there just you know, going around. So I made sure she was committing and everyone fit right exactly where I wanted them to. And now it's time to sew up the sides to close up the shorts. And to do this, I did my basic straight stitch. We're being super basic today because girl, we do not have energy for zigzag stitches right now. I'm kidding. It's because my fabric was not stretchy fabric, so I did not need to do a zigzag stitch. But in case your fabric is stretchy, make sure you use a zigzag stitch. That way you can allow for stretch. You can accommodate people who are not invited to the party. So I just did my basic straight stitch, definitely took my time with that. And now it's time to do the same exact thing along the crotch bit. That way you have your pair of shorts. So when it came to sewing this bit, I do advise you pull the fabric a bit. That way you don't have excessive fabric lumping around. As you can see, I really had to work around the fabric. I had to buy people some stuff. I didn't have to buy them. I had to bribe them for them to sit right. So I do recommend you pull your fabric a bit. That way you don't have the excess fabric and everything will look nice and beautiful. But for me, I just had to work around it and cut off the excess fabric once I was done, which honestly wasn't that bad, but I just thought I'd mention that. I also made sure to serge all the raw edges. Obviously, you don't want this to fray. If you don't have a serger, use an overlocker. Wow, that is a serger. <laughs> use an overlock stitch or a zigzag stitch, and it will serve the same exact purpose. And as you can see, the side is on lockdown. She is now, she can't go anywhere. So she is in it, too in it. So now once you've done all that, you have your pair of shorts and you are basically done with the bottom bit of your romper. So now it's time to maneuver and finesse the top bit. That way they can come together and just make everyone happy. And as you can see, I aligned my shorts.
shorts to my shirt. I did make sure everyone was sitting in the right seat. But as you can see, there is a big difference between the shorts and the shirt. So there's a lot of gap on the sides and you cannot attach these two pieces together like this. So I just measured how long that distance was. It was three inches and I decided I'd take in three inches at each and every point. So this is me essentially just marking a midpoint at the front. This is a six inch mark and I'm just going to do some tiny dots that are three inches wide and this will take in my shirt and make it fit into my shorts. So I just pull the fabric in all directions. I was making her go to work when she did not want to show up. So you're just going to pin the fabric together, make sure the excess fabric is going inside. This is essentially a very tiny dot and it's going to do so much in taking in that excess fabric. And as you can see, it looks quite decent. This is the easiest way to do this. You can go through the entire process of resizing the top bit, but I wanted to make this as easy as possible and still have it looking cute so this is a method I decided would be best. I obviously did the same thing for the back and as you can see the two pieces are now perfect for each other. They are a match on Tinder so now it's time to attach them together. So I made sure the front bit was lying on the front of the shirt and as you can see the top bit of my shirt is inside out and this is because I'm attaching the right sides together. You want the right sides to be together that way when you turn this the right way out everything will look nice and neat. You don't want to attach your top and you find out that the shirt is inside out or things like that. So just make sure you're aligning everything perfectly. And as you can see, I had to get rid of that last button because when I was sewing the two pieces together, she would get in my way. She would fight me and I just wanted to have no problems. So I decided to get rid of the button. And as you can see, I'm just pinning the two pieces together. And at a point where there was a dot, I made sure to pin the fabric in place and get rid of the pin I had used previously. So I had to turn this around in all angles. I had to make sure she was happy with me and I'm just pinning the two pieces together along the edge. That way when it comes to sewing everything is easy breezy cover girl easy. Wow. I don't know if that's an actual tagline but yeah I'm just spinning everyone together. I'm making sure everyone's happy. No one is not paying their taxes. I'm making sure everyone is sitting at the right seat. I'm making sure the nephews are getting along, the in-laws are getting along and just pinning the fabric in place. Once I pinned everything together, you're now going to sew around the pins and this will attach your shorts to your shirt and you will essentially have your romper. So when it came to sewing, I just did my basic straight stitch. I did leave about a quarter inch seam allowance that way I could serge all that raw edge you're seeing. As you can see, this fabric was trying me. She was spraying all over the place, so I definitely had to serge her. So I just did my straight stitch. Honestly, nothing fancy. This is so easy to do. Once you've aligned and pinned everything, this step is going to be so easy. And this is what that will look like once you're done. And obviously I made sure to serge all that raw edge just so that we wouldn't have problems and people wouldn't be asking for a divorce after two months. So I had to make sure everyone was sitting right, sitting tight, and I just serged everything in place. Once everything was serged, as you can see, she looks beautiful. She is ready to be a lifetime partner. So once everything was nice and serged, once you turn it the right way out, as you can see, you essentially have a romper. And now it's time to add some finishing touches to this romper just to make it look like an actual romper that you didn't steal your ex-boyfriend's shirt and make it into a romper. You want this to look cute. So what I'm doing now is I'm essentially seam ripping the collar bit at the top. That way we can have kind of a mandarin collar that's so pretty. So I just got rid of the top bit and this is so easy to do. Just use your seam ripper and get her out. Evict her. Tell her she is gone. She is out the door. So I just use my seam ripper for this and I tell tugged at the strings and once that was done as you can see the collar bit easily comes off so as you can see this collar is gaping open and you do need to close her up make sure she's not snitching to the authorities telling people businesses they should not be knowing about so just do a top stitch and you'll be fine and moving on to the sleeves I measured 21 centimeters and this would be the length of my sleeve draw a straight line across with my piece of chalk and ruler and then cut off the excess bit of fabric I then use the bit I cut off as a template 
it on the other side just to make sure the sleeves would match up perfectly and no one would know I made this in my darkly lit basement. So with the raw edge that's left, you're just going to double fold the fabric and do a straight stitch all across the entire edge. That way everything is nice and folded and the frayed fabric is tucked away and she will not be bothering you or your family ever again. So when I moved on to the sewing machine, as you can see, I'm folding in the fabric twice, making sure the frayed edges are quite tucked in. They're in there, locked away for life. And I just did my straight stitch, went about my business and lived my life to the fullest. Once you've sewn everything up, look at how pretty that looks. And all the frayed fabric is now gone. I did use two different colored threads, which is why you're seeing that over there. So now that that's done, it's time for the final bit, which is making the tie. And we're going to make this from the sleeve bits that we just cut off. And as you can see, I'm opening up the sleeve along the seam, cutting off that cuff bit because we don't want that bulkiness in our beautiful romper. And I'm left with this piece of sleeve and this is where we're going to get our tie bits. So I worked around this. I made sure I was utilizing each and every piece of fabric I could. I did make my strips about three inches wide and as long as I could possibly get from this piece of fabric. So you're obviously going to get a few pieces and you're going to join them together, right sides kissing, pin them in place that way you have one long strap. So I just pinned it in place, made sure everyone was happy. And as you can see, I did manage to get quite a long strap and you're going to repeat this with the other sleeve and you will have two beautiful straps. And now you're going to sew all along the points with pins just to join all the pieces together to form two long straps. So moving on to the sewing machine, this was so easy to do. I just did my basic straight stitch, made sure to back stitch because I want to obey the law. I don't want to go to prison. And once everything was nice and sewn, as you can see, the two pieces are firmly attached together and they're not going anywhere. So this is what the two bits look like. And you're going to use these two pieces to make your tie. So I'm just putting them right sides together. That way, when you turn everything the right way out, this frayed fabric, everything won't show. So I went ahead and pinned off camera and as you can see I pinned all along the edges all the four edges and you're basically just going to sew all around to make sure you close up your strap. So I'm just showing you where to sew and I slanted two pins that way I would remember to leave a gap because otherwise I would forget. So now it's time for you to meet Billy. This is my four month old pug. He sits by my feet when I'm sewing and it's the cutest thing ever. And he was being super cute on this day, very sleepy. So yeah, I thought I'd introduce you guys to Billy, my companion, I love him so much. He's a poop machine, but I wouldn't have it any other way. So this is him. I'm trying to get him to say hi to you guys, but he was having it for a second. And then I tried to wave his cute little paw and he bit me so I decided to move back to sewing so I just kept him down and he sat by my feet while I finished this DIY and as you can see I sewed all along the edges and I formed this huge rectangular piece and as you can see I did have my gap do not forget to leave your gap it's the most frustrating thing ever if you have to unstitch everything girl I am sorry I tried to tell you so you're going to use this gap to turn things the right way out out. and this was super easy to do with my hands mostly because the strap was really wide and I could turn it within itself without having to use a loop turner or some funny gadgets like pencils I don't know why I said that's a funny gadget but yeah I just used my hands for this this took about two minutes to do I'm just pulling the fabric within itself making sure the right side ends up the right way out so pull, tug, drink energy drinks, drink some wine, pull, tug until you're done. And once you're done, you will have this beautiful strap that looks a bit weird now, but once you iron everything down, it will look nice and neat. So there is our gap. And to close it up, you're just going to make sure the frayed fabric goes back in. She's locked in prison and you're going to do a straight stitch across that gaping point. And as you can see, once I ironed the strap, she looked nice. She looked neat. She 
was ready to go to the wedding. So ironing did make a huge difference with this strap. And this is her. I'm just showing you the beauty. She is gorgeous. And with my gap, it was still there. And now it's time to just close her up and make sure she is ready for this wedding ceremony. So I did my basic straight stitch across that point, made sure to backstitch. And once I was done, I had my tie strap and I was done with my romper. So this is what that looks like. I love, love, love this, as I said at the beginning of the video. And I think the tie is such a cute detail to tie everything together. See what I did there? I love it. I hope you love it too. If you do love it, I hope you try to make it. Make sure you tag me in your Instagram pictures if you do recreate this. I love seeing your recreations. Having said that, it's time for me to go get a glass of water because your girl is perched. And I hopefully will be seeing you in my next video. Until then, bye guys. It breaks my heart.